Now today I'm talking about the perfect steak and the reason I'm doing that is people keep saying to me I find it hard to cook a steak indoors. They're great on a barbecue but once they get indoors it's pretty hard. But first of all before I get onto that with a few hints and tips and things I'm just going to do some garnishes to go with it to make it that little bit more special. Take the stalk off. You can use that in a stir fry or something like that or in your stock if you're making some stock and then we peel it. So you just peel it like that and these are field mushrooms of course and I'm going to roast these which accentuates their flavour. Just gives them that lovely earthy flavour. Some salt and some pepper. It'll shrink quite a bit you know when you put them in the oven so you do need a reasonable amount of them. So I've got four and remembering this is only for one but I've got four mushrooms of a reasonable size. And always make sure the mushrooms are the same size. Don't care if you if you veggie man's looking at you very strangely as you pick through his bin. Doesn't matter, you're allowed to do that. So Huey said you could do it. And then some olive oil and I'm also going to add a dollop of butter to each of them. So I've got some butter here and we'll just add the dollop. I actually like the, the butter because it just adds some extra flavour and you just put that in the centre. And then that just goes in the oven. And they'll take about 15 minutes and it's a good idea just to turn it over once. You do need to preheat your grill. I'm using a grill you could use a nice heavy bottom pan if you wanted to. And what I'm also making, I'm making a chimichurra. Now chimichurra is regarded as the ketchup of Argentina or really South America. They use it with everything. This is my version, it's actually slightly different because normally chimichurra is just a paste of green herbs. And to that end you can use any herbs you like. I've got in there oregano, parsley and mint. But you can use anything you've got. And what I've also got is one large, well no it's actually a medium large chilli. And a big nice plump clove of garlic which I've also chopped very finely. To that we then add red wine vinegar. And some olive oil, quite a bit of olive oil. Some spring onions, I've just got one spring onion there which I've chopped really finely and this is sort of my variation because it's I suppose it's halfway between a chimichurra and a salsa. So I've got some cherry tomatoes here which I'm cutting in four and then I'm cutting in half again. Actually talking about steaks I really should dedicate this to footballers of all codes. <laughs> Can I tell you the reason why? I thought this was I thought this was a ripper I have to be honest. This uh, AFL player, he cut his hand while he was cooking his steak. Now, me being a clever thing, I thought he cut his hand, you know, obviously with a knife, just like that. He cut his hand because he dropped the plate from the microwave because it was hot when he was defrosting the steak in the microwave. So you can see why I'm dedicating it to footballers of all guys. That's a worry. You do not ever put your steak near a microwave. God. Anyway, serve them right. No sympathy from whatsoever. So we just mix that up. So we've got tomatoes, spring onions, the herbs, olive oil. We also need some seasoning. Bit of salt. Certainly some pepper. We taste things. I'm always amazed. Even chefs I've worked with, they don't taste things. Ridiculous. Here we go. That is good. That is beautiful. I love that. That is going to be superb. Nice piece of porterhouse steak. I've trimmed it of all the fat and the reason being is I have my steaks fairly rare and of course because you have them pretty rare your fat doesn't cook properly but if you cook them more that's fine you can leave the fat up. Has to be out of the fridge and the reason being is if it's cold and it comes straight from the fridge what will happen is the inside won't cook properly and it really won't because it's too cold. So I've had that out of the fridge and it's a decent sized piece of steak as you can see and we're just going to give it a bit of a whack just with a steak hammer. Don't do it too much unless you like your steaks well done but don't mention that to me but if you like your steaks well done batter it out quite a bit more. Right to that we then add some oil spray or you can just brush some oil on it but you oil the steak, not the grill. And the other thing about it too, is 
you just season it just before you're putting it on the grill. A decent amount of salt, that is very essential. And quite a bit of pepper too. And what I've also got, I've got here what the Americans call potato planks. And I have cooked those until they're almost tender and then I've just cut them in nice thick slices. So we'll oil those too. I think I like the name even more than I like the potatoes. I like the potatoes, but I think the name's great. Potato planks. All right, onto the grill. Now the other thing, apart from the grill being preheated, what you also have to make sure is you don't play with the blessed thing. You don't put it on there and turn it and squeeze it. Never squeeze it, because that just squeezes the juices out. So you never squeeze the thing. But what you do do is when you put it on, you lift it up. So all we're then going to do is cook that, turning it once or twice, that's all. And making sure that, as I said, you season it just before it goes on the grill. And the other thing, of course, is you don't play with the blessed thing. I know I've said it, but it's very important. And you also don't put it in the microwave. <laughs> oh, some people. Right, as you can see, these are looking rather good. I'm just turning them over. They don't take long. 200 degrees I've got that oven on. Now the other thing that is very, very important when you're cooking a steak is that you rest it. Now, it sounds really strange, doesn't it, resting? And I'll tell you the reason why. When you put it on the grill, the blood rushes to the centre, you know, because it's scared. And then when it cooks, it stays there. But when you rest it, the blood settles through it. Or the juices, I suppose, if it's more well cooked. The other thing about it is, I know we've seen all the things about poking it. Now that, you can see that that's got some give in it. So that's about, or oh, rare to medium rare, right? But the easiest way is just grab a little knife and make a little cut. It makes life a lot simpler. Anyway, rest that for a few minutes. The mushrooms are nearly ready and let's just have a look at our potatoes. They're coming along nicely. Now, we've got our chimichurri, we've got our steak, which is going to sit there for about two minutes, I reckon. You don't need any more. You don't need to cover it. This kitchen's pretty warm, but it'll just be settling. And then when you cut it, it's going to be so much more tender. So potatoes are ready. Steak is almost ready. Chimichurri is ready. Mushrooms are ready. Fantastic. My steak is going to be beautiful. Right, our chimichurri. Quite a bit of this. And I always put some extra up on the side because I find that once people have tasted how good this is, they want more. So I always make a little bit extra. A little bit extra. Beautiful on a steak sandwich too. Right, mushrooms. See how they've shrunk? Look at the size of them. There is a method in my madness because what it does is it accentuates the flavour. It just brings out those lovely flavours in it. So there we've got our steak. And we just need to do something with our potatoes. You put the potatoes on the same plate, if you wanted to. I think it's a pity to shove them all together, purely and simply because it sort of crowds the plate. A little bit of olive oil on that, not too much. Just to moisten it as a garnish for the potatoes. This is little baby Chris. All right, guys, the perfect steak. Pretty simple stuff. Even a footballer could do that. Oh, I love that story. I really don't know. I know you'll enjoy it. I really do. Anyway, cheers. That's the way to go.